Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Ingram Micro Webinar the next level with Microsoft and Avpoint. My name is George Farrer and I'm the Business Development Manager for the Modern Workplace Practice here in Micro based in Sydney. Uh, of course, we're using Microsoft Teams live events for this webinar, so please note that this session is recorded um, and slide decks will be available um, after the session is completed. Uh, we'll be taking questions, time permitting, which you can type into the Q&A panel and we'll answer those questions uh, towards the end. Uh, Today is the 30th of March and I'd like to make a special welcome to our friends in Brisbane who are enduring another three day lockdown, so I hope you're keeping safe. Um, our agenda for today is we're going to run through uh, some Avpoint policies and insights and talk about Microsoft security and taking your practice to the next level. We have two excellent speakers today. Uh, Elliot Seto is the Channel Solutions Engineer in Avpoint and he'll discuss Avpoint's policies and insight solution that helps break down data silos and lets you easily implement governance policies for sharing and external users, membership, ownership and more. And Robert Crane. Uh, Robert is the Director of CIA Ops. He helps businesses and resellers, systems integrators and distributors with a wide range of services, including training and consulting. Uh, Robert's a 10-year Microsoft MVP with deep knowledge and expertise of the Microsoft Cloud across Microsoft 365 and Azure. Uh, he'll discuss the top tools to help make uh, to help you guide through the security conversations, such as the commercial consulting tool, the M365 value calculator, and secure core demonstrations. Uh, Robert has a podcast called the Need to Know Podcast, and I'd recommend you check that out and subscribe. Uh, so now, uh, Elliot, when you're ready, I'll hand over to you, and uh, we'll hear from uh, Elliot at our point to discuss Avpoint security policies. Thanks for the introduction, George. Uh, firstly, I want to say thank you to the Ingram team for inviting us to be on this call. I uh, appreciate you all spending the time uh, joining on this webinar as well. Uh, so today, um, as George mentioned, I'll be discussing our Policies Insight solution, which is uh, basically providing a, a level of governance within the Microsoft 365 stack. Um, before we get started, just a little bit around our point. We've traditionally been a, uh, for no, those of you who don't know us, uh, we've traditionally been an enterprise um, service provider, particularly around data management and the uh, uh, Microsoft space. Um, but uh, in recent developments, we're focusing more and investing more within the channel, particularly working with our uh, DC partners like Ingram Micro um, and obviously directly with our bars and our uh, MSP partners as well. Um, you know, there's uh, some stats up there which I won't go through in detail, but we are um, Right throughout the globe, um, a big stat there is you know we we manage um, over 40 petabytes of uh, customer data today, uh, which is quite substantial, um, and, and excited to be working with um, our partner base as well. Um, the three core pillars um, that we do uh, work with our partners within the channel today, um, our fly tool to uh, help obviously migrate um, customers to the uh, cloud, um, our backup tools, um, self-explanatory what that is, but really focusing around um, PI today or policies insights, uh, where it's a, a tool to allow you to monitor and govern, uh, basically to assess risk. So it sort of flows into the security conversation that uh, I'm sure Robert will be going through um, today um, around how you can um, see what your customers, users are doing, how they're collaborating um, and what, uh, what types of information is being shared across that. So to get a bit of understanding of why Pi exists today, we need to understand a little bit about Microsoft. And I know there's a lot of uh, technical guys probably on the call today, um, so I won't spend too much time on this, but um, just to go through, Microsoft have made it really, really easy to collaborate. Right, um, the inner workings of, of uh, the back end on how everything works is all interconnected. Um, sharing files can, from multiple sources when you build out a, 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 a team channel, as an example, at the back end, you get all these other things connected to it. You know, SharePoint side, a, a, a group 365 email, uh, things like that, where um, a, a lot of users could be uh, added to those or shared from multiple sources. So because of that, uh, because of the way Microsoft have uh, enhanced their collaboration, um, it's potentially uh, arises an issue or problem 
where you have um, you know, problem users or shadow users, as we call them in, uh, at that point, um, overexposed content, uh, potentially sharing documents uh, with people that you didn't realize you were doing because they're added to uh, one source or the other. Um, so we don't actually know what we should be worried about, right? Which can create a problem when, when in, in terms of adoption with things like Microsoft Teams and SharePoint, um, because users aren't potentially using it correctly, and we have no um, easy way to uh, visibly see what's actually going on. So at the end of the day, we want to make things um, easy for users to collaborate, but we also want to make it easy for IT to manage. So to give you a bit of background about how that looks today, um, you know, uh, from the Microsoft environment, right? The um, you know you'll see members and guests within a particular team channel or from SharePoint itself. Um, those can be different, right? Even though they're connected, if um, a user adds one to the other. Um, uh, you could have the problem where you have certain uh, members or guests in the team channel, but different ones in your SharePoint site, right? Because um, it's easy to, to share across multiple sources through all the apps, whether it's you know PowerPoint, Word, Excel, etc. Um, you don't actually know who's sharing what, right? Or unless you go through and lock them down from the get-go using potentially some of the best practice that that Microsoft definitely defined, um, it can be difficult to understand exactly what's going on there. Right? But it's not, not enough to understand who has access. Right, We also need to know the nature of uh, the, the data that's being shared, whether that's sensitive uh, information, whether that's confidential, right, and whether they've actually accessed that, right, whether they've gone through and uh, looked at the file, downloaded it. We need better data to understand um, uh, what measures we should be putting in place to control that. So from a native perspective, how you can do this today Right, is um, pull up your permissions report. Right, there's a lot of files there. Um, you know, uh, a tech might go through, pull that, but we need to know how to prioritize that. There's a lot of information we're going to manually sift through. Then grab your audit activity, right, to understand who's accessed what. And then obviously the DLP, report, uh, DLP reports will help you understand exactly what uh, types of sensitive um, information is potentially being shared across those sources, right? Whether that's things like a credit card number, um, you know, uh, uh, healthcare information, bank account details, or any form of PII that you can uh, uh, define. So when we look at how that uh, helps, you know, going through and pulling all those, um, you know, doing a little bit of research and, and correlating all that information together, we can start to build a story, right? In this example, we've got Roy, who's the external user, right? So we can understand that Roy has access to a particular team. He's accessed a document 10 times in the past month. Right, and that team has potentially sensitive information in there based on the uh, indexing that Microsoft do uh, through the DLP uh, reports that you can download. So we can understand that story, right? But it, is, it doesn't give us enough to work off, uh, and it's not generally that easy to do, right? Because it's a very manual manual task, um, and as you saw before, there's a lo lot of log files. So we need to know how to prioritize that. Right. Um, how we intend to do it is to understand this, um, the sensitivity levels. Right, and correlate them with the exposure, right? Which will give give us a brief look at, at potentially what risk um, is out there, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean that that risk is bad, right? Uh, because you might have external users that should be part of those teams that should have access to the documents, but it gives us a, a better visual as to exactly what's going on, right? So we want to be able to uh, decide what's important um, by focusing on those uh, higher risk items. So today, natively. Right, the options for control, there's numerous uh, areas where you can set these uh, retention sensitivity labels. Obviously, that's going to um, pull out that PII data uh, based on the DLP, right? Um, and then various areas within the uh, Microsoft environments where you would need to go through and, um, you know, uh, set up your administration rules, your policies, restrict external sharing, um, and control provisioning at the end of the day, right? Which can potentially hamper adoption. Right. Um, there's a lot of other stuff you might need to do from a security perspective because you know they've used uh, Dropbox and uh, things like that uh, in the past. Unless you've locked down that administrator rights or the ability for them to, um, you know, use other applications, right? That they would just go back to revert back to what they know, what they've done before. Right. Um, in Teams Admin Center, uh, there's a few things there that you can go through and change. You know, set private uh, teams, um, prevent people from creating private channels. Right, and a bunch of other areas that you potentially need to go through to set up your policies uh, and, and configuration. If you're a PowerShell user, great, 
you can potentially go through and do that. But um, you know, anyone who's used PowerShell, it, it can be a lot of work for some, right? Especially if you if you haven't been using it for a while, uh, it might take your time um, to go through and build out those scripts. Um, and then, you know, it's not potentially going to give you everything that you need from the get go. Um, when we're looking at things like GDPR, which is obviously uh, something that's not really relevant in Australia, uh, but maybe you might have a health organisation that needs to comply because they work with someone in the EU. Right? Uh, that's, but this is why exposure and, and particularly sensitive in, uh, information that's exposed um, could be a problem uh, and we want to prevent against that to comply with those uh, relevant regulations. Or it could just be about, um, you know, a, a, a morale issue internally, like imagine sharing a payroll sheet for the entire organisation with all your employees, right? Um, that could uh, create some uh, potential morale issues um, and some conflict within an organisation, especially if they're seeing someone getting paid more than them um, when they shouldn't be or when they think they shouldn't be. So how can AppPoint help? This is where policies and insights comes in, right? Um, what we're doing is basically um, we're not doing anything magic out of the box, right? We're doing, we're working with Microsoft Toolset today, um, pulling that information that they already pull out of, of your Microsoft licenses, right? All we're doing is making it a bit easier to um, by, uh, to visualize by consolidating all that information, aggregating that data, right? Um, so that we can find and prioritize exactly what's going on, right? We can also go through and monitor and fix those on the fly, right? Or put in um, automated uh, measures to enforce and prevent that. Uh, in the future so that uh, we can effectively um, take away the onus away from the user um, so they don't, uh, don't need to worry about what types of information they're sharing because the system is going to do it on the back end. Um, but obviously this doesn't take away you know, standard best practices and things like that. You, know, you should be implementing anyway, right? This just helps, uh, helps to understand exactly what the users are doing. So now that we have uh, these type of things, we can now start to create that uh, better story, right? Um, understanding that better story, we can then create, start to create stronger policies, configuration, uh, prevention against potential leaks um, of ex uh, internal data to external participants or even internal to internal groups that shouldn't have that access to those, right? So now that story around Roy, right? Uh, we can now automate that to, if he gets access, we can uh, roll that back by restricting his access to our policies and understand that uh, in this case, Sarah granted Roy access to the file, but we automatically reverted back up on the back end and allowed Sarah, uh, notified Sarah to let her know um, why we rolled that back. So just to give you a bit of insight as to um, what uh, policies and insights might look like, right? So this is actually broken up into two portals uh, and that's designed for that, for that way for a reason. This is the insights portal that allows you that visibility, allows you to, to understand exactly what's going on, uh, see how many external users might be um, added to your uh, individual objects, uh, see any anonymous links or shadow users, and to address that risk that we talked about, which is correlating the exposure levels versus security definitions to help us um, define what uh, what risk levels are there um, and also so that we can prioritize what needs to be worked on first right whether that's your internal teams or at the at the user level this is something that you can provide um, end user access so that they can see on a day-to-day -day what's happening right they can identify which user are most at risk because they're potentially doing the wrong things outside of your uh, company's internal policies and um, and uh, un take those that context into action by um, creating uh, stronger policies as part of that, right? Um, you can also see that trend line information to understand what that risk looks like over time, right? So uh, in, a, in a perfect world, we should hope to see that uh, uh, line uh, on a downward trend, uh, but they can jump up and down depending on, on how users are using it, uh, which will obviously allow us to make uh, decisions on the fly, right? Um, so there's a lot of information that you can pull out of this from, you know, what specific users have access. You can see um, from a high level, um, all that sensitive uh, information. You can um, uh, drill down to specific objects so you can understand exactly uh, what, what they're doing in Teams or SharePoint or OneDrive for business, um, et cetera. So once you have that information, you can then go through and set up these policies, right? You can uh, go through and create uh, these automated rules to roll any of those violations back against their policies. So in an example, you could, you know, have an executive uh, team group as, um, and go through and set up restrictions on that. We know that we've only got 10 executive team members. They're all that should be in that group. So we can restrict membership so it doesn't go beyond 10, 
right? If someone tries to add, add a, a new person, external guests, we could roll that back. We can limit external sharing of content. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do through Teams, right? There are different rules in SharePoint, OneDrive, et cetera, that you can also add in to create really strong pol uh, policies and uh, uh, virtually, um, again, take that onus away from uh, from the user. So uh, they're, they're sharing, they're collaborating securely at the end of the day. Bunch of other rules. This list has grown tremendously, so there's a, a lot of things you can do. Just wanted to give you a snapshot of uh, uh, some of the other additional things that you can build out. Right. At the end of the day, like I said, we're not doing anything magic. We are really, we're just using what Microsoft do um, at the moment by leveraging the information they're pulling out through those reports, but pulling it together to just make it nice and easy to uh, visualize. And um, you know, for MSPs, your bars, um, easier to discuss with the uh, client. Um, at the end of the day, it's harder to tell them what to do. It's easier to show them what, uh, what's happening um, so they get a, a better idea of what, what potential risks actually exist out there. Um, so as part of our ad point, um, you know, go to market uh, resources. It's not just about us, you know, selling your product. We want to be there. We want to be a, a true partner, um, uh, you know, alongside Ingram um, by providing with, you know, all the content that you need to, to essentially grow and scale your business, right? Uh, through webinars, blogs, through thought leadership, um, allowing you to, not just from a product sell, but understand uh, potentially what you should be doing or what we see in this space um, to allow you to grow and excel. Um, we've got a conference coming up as well, um, something you can take advantage of. We're really heavily focused on the channel this year, right, and beyond. Um, so there's going to be a lot of good content and, uh, as we start building that out. One of the biggest things, um, and I'm almost done, uh, is the app point support. Um, you know, this is our X factor effectively of why we've been able to uh, win from a lot of our competitors is we have that 24 seven uh, globally dispersed team. We've got that follow the sun model um, and we have 800 dedicated R&D professionals within our organization. Um, that is only second to, uh, from a Microsoft point of view, second to Microsoft in terms of uh, R&D uh, resourcing. Okay. Um, I've been talking for a lot. I'm sure you have questions. Feel free to jump in at the end. Um, but if you are looking at trialing, uh, we do have free trials available through our Elements portal, uh, which links to the marketplace um, or Ingram marketplace, um, or re reach out to your Ingram account manager for further details. Right. Uh, with that said, I'll hand things over to the man of the hour, uh, Robert. Uh, you can take it from here. Sure. Thanks, Elliot. So let me uh, just share my screen. Uh, where is my screen number two? Here we go. So hopefully that is available and everybody can see that uh, with them. So thank you very much, Elliot. Thank you to the good people at Ingram for asking me along to speak to you uh, about something that never sleeps, uh, that is security. So security today is such an important topic, but unfortunately it is something uh, that is going to see greater and greater demand put on IT resellers to lock down uh, systems from the largest to the smallest. So uh, I think the most recent one that's made the news is the Channel 9 uh, situation. We've had an exchange server on-prem challenges. We've had uh, all sorts of ongoing phishing uh, issues, and that is something you're going to have to defend your clients against 24 by 7. And the good thing is that Microsoft 365 is going to provide you a lot of the tools to do that. Now, many of the tools, again, vary on the licensing that you have, but the number one place I recommend anybody to start is with securescore.microsoft.com. You can get to it via that URL. I'll show you how you can navigate to it uh, manually as well. But this is part of every single Microsoft SKU, and what it does is it's going to give you uh, an overall score out of 100 of how Microsoft rates the tenant based on the security enablement that has been made inside the tenant. So in essence, we look at the screen here, the example shown here on this demo tenant is that our score is only 17%, which is pretty low. On the right hand side, you'll see that compared to organizations like these, similar sort of SKUs, similar sort of size, um, it's you know again about 10 points or so below that. Now, at the end of the day, we, wanted, we want to be aiming to get this score as close as we can to 100%. And that is going to give us a very good indication that we are using all the capabilities inside the Microsoft environment. Now, again, remember that this is 
What you see in secure score does depend on the licensing that you have inside the tenant. Now, a little bit of a note here, if you weren't aware, is that if you go into the top right hand corner there, as you see, uh, under the include option and pull that down, you'll see that you get a number of different options. Now, my advice to you would be is enabling the current license score. Now, what that will do is that will add an additional line or additional item in the graph and in the reporting that will let you know what the ultimate score you could achieve or the tenant could achieve uh, if all the security capabilities uh, were enabled. All right, so this is a really good tool, firstly, to do evaluations for customers that you have. It's also an idea to engage them with this secure score so you can show them uh, how that secure score is increasing over time. Uh, and it is obviously an a, a, a evaluation done by Microsoft. Now, on the sales side of the question, we can also use secure score when we go and talk to prospects and use secure score as a talking point, because generally uh, what you'll find is that most uh, people who have configured Office 365 or Microsoft 365 um, do not and have not configured the appropriate or the ultimate level of security on their environment. So it's very easy to go and have a discussion with the customer and sort of say, or the prospect and say, look, you know, here is an evaluation by Microsoft that is rating your tenant at 17%. Um, our best practice is 95, 97, whatever you want. And uh, we will help you get to that level and that will make your tenant more secure. Now, on the other side of the coin too, don't forget that as Microsoft begins to promote um, the security side of it and uh, remind people that a lot of the security is built into these systems, that um, secure score is going to be raised or bubbled to the top where users themselves will be encouraged to go and look at that themselves. So again, now's the time to get in, understand it, be on the front foot, start using it, talking to your customers, mentioning it to prospects, because eventually it will come a day when uh, customers themselves, I think, will start going in there. So rather than look at slides, why don't we go in and have a look at a bit of a real world example. So I've got a tenant here. Now we can get to uh, the secure score via the Microsoft Security Center. All right, so you'll see it over here uh, on the left hand side. If we just select that, we get the display. The other way, as I mentioned, is you can go there directly by securescore.office.com or by microsoft.com and it will take you to effectively uh, the same location. Now in the center here, we've got our score out of 100, uh, pretty woeful as you see. Here's the option to go to our include option. I would always recommend you turning on the current license score. You'll see that it adds a bit of a dotted line there to give me an indication that strangely enough, if I turned everything on, I would get to uh, 100%. Now, if we scroll down the page a bit, we also get information here on what the top improvement actions will be. So this is basically a checklist provided by Microsoft uh, that you can follow to improve that score. So you'll see here that if I ensure that all users have multi-factor authentication, I get an extra 12 points. If I block legacy authentication, I would get an additional 11 points there. Now, down the bottom there, you'll see again, there's the history. So you'll see here that the points have been going down uh, over time generally. Now, remember that secure score here is an assessment by Microsoft. So you are being assessed or the tenant is being um, um, evaluated against what Microsoft considers best practice and that will change over a period of time. Now, the second tab up the top here, you'll see that we've got these improvement actions, as I mentioned, in rank order. Now, if I select any one of these, I will get the ability here to go in and get more information. You'll see that I can add an action plan, whether I'm going to address it. Uh, you'll see here that I also get an implementation. So what we can do here is we can follow these steps to obviously implement the items that Microsoft is uh, talking about here. So not only do we get a checklist, we also get a full action plan of what we need to follow. Now, Remember that if, for example, you've done third party MFA, we can obviously go into any of these recommendations or scores and we can say, look, we're doing that with third parties and that is covered. 
and Microsoft will then take appropriate action when it comes uh, to the score. So I think it's very important to make sure that this score is maintained and that it does reflect the true nature of the security environment you have configured, whether it includes our third party products or not. But at its base, you'll be able to work through, again, the many, many items here that are available to you. Click on them and then be taken through the step-by-step -step progress, making it very easy to uh, complete and make the tenant more secure. We also get the history here, so you can see how it's changed over time. So we went from 20% and we've dropped all the way back here to 11%. And again, uh, Microsoft lists here why they have made those changes. And again, I will reinforce the fact that this is a Microsoft evaluation based on Microsoft's uh, metrics and scores. Now, if we look at the metrics and trends here, again, we get the ability here to judge it over time. We get the comparison over time. We get our regression trends and so on. So there's lots of really good information in here. You'll see we can filter it by the number of days. We can filter by you know, certain information. Uh, we can add identity. We can add apps. We can add devices as well. So there is a lot that we can work with here in Microsoft Secure Score. Now, the other good thing about Secure Score is that we can access this programmatically if you want. So you can access information with PowerShell and you can also bring that into your own reporting. Perhaps you might bring it into Power BI or something else. Now, in summary, the important thing here is to start with Secure Score. My plan of action or my recommendation, my recommended plan of action would be is go and evaluate your own uh, production tenant. Go and have a look at your own tenant and make sure that that tenant that you are using day to day is scored to the maximum. So you want it, I would suggest, to be 95 or at least 92 and above. If it's not, take the required actions to get it to that level and then use that as a demonstration point, an example point when you talk to your customers and then get them and their tenants up to that same sort of level and then go and talk to your um, any prospects you have and use your baseline in your production tenant as an example of what is best practice. Now, when clients come to me to do one-on-one -on -one consulting and they want to know which provider they should go with, especially when it comes to cybersecurity, I will tell them as a starting point, go and ask that provider to tell you or show you what their own secure score is. Okay, so I think you're going to find that there will be more and more demands made around, you know, making sure that your own environment is as secure as possible, 90, 90 and above, uh, before we go and look at doing the same sort of thing here uh, for customers. So again, that is Microsoft Secure Score, securescore.microsoft.com. Don't forget to go in and select the little option there to add the current license score in as well. Now, another tool that Microsoft makes uh, available to people that uh, many are not aware of uh, is this commercial consulting tool. Also, all the fa fabulous resources at transform.microsoft.com. And the idea here is that it is a way for resellers to um, work through a conversation Q&A style uh, with a customer or a prospect and come down and filter down to the recommendations that will best suit that customer. So a lot of people probably have that experience, but it's also good to run through these sort of tools uh, to see if the understanding matches what Microsoft is making available in a lot of the uh, licenses today. So if you're a Microsoft partner, all you need to do is to go to transform.microsoft.com you should see a website like shown, and then you basically just log into that with your partner details. And then we can go in and look at this commercial consulting tool, and it is going to allow the evaluation of you know, current environments, whether they be on-prem, whether they be um, you know, introductory SKUs, maybe like uh, business basic or business standard, and have a conversation around the value add of things like Microsoft 365 Business Premium. It's going to help you choose a, a better SKU potentially for that environment. Now, inside this commercial consulting tool, we've got two modes. We've basically got the capability to uh, do this evaluation, but we can also conduct workshops. So one of the best ways to give people uh, a feel and understanding of the integration benefits of Teams and SharePoint 
and OneDrive for Business and all the other goodies that come along with the Microsoft offering these days is to give them a hands-on. Now, inside this uh, portal, transform.microsoft.com, there will be a resource for you to go in and create a number of uh, demo tenants. Now, the first thing to remember is that the demo tenants cannot be converted to production, therefore, demo purposes only. And that's a good thing because I think most people are very hesitant to take a demo tenant and transform it into production because you end up with a lot of demo data held over um, that can, again, be a little bit embarrassing or um, inconvenient at times. So I think that having a standalone demo with unique users and that encourages users to go and have much more of a play because if something gets deleted or they make a mistake, it's not going to cause major dramas in their production environment. And then when they're ready, they just throw that out and start anew and they've got some understanding. Now, the good thing with this is we can get up to six demos uh, through this uh, environment. One of those demos can be for 12 months. My advice to you is to look at using that as a demo for yourself, a trial uh, that you can go and show people. And then you get uh, five others for up to uh, 90 days. So the idea here with this uh, tool is that it's going to take you through a process and then it's going to spit out a report. It's going to spit out uh, capabilities for you to go and uh, talk to your uh, customer around that. So again, we're looking at what's now called the business workshop tool. Okay, that was the uh, previously that solution finder. And the idea here is, is we can go in and really start to uh, get some information and leverage on the hard work that Microsoft has done for us. So let me just transfer to my partner tenant where I have logged into this. So this is transform.microsoft.com. This is the front page here. So again, just a quick uh, tour. So you'll get your dashboard, you'll get the identity over here on the right hand side you've got the ability to access a number of tools. One of the ones I would call out here is this custom content assembler. So if you're looking for marketing material, PDFs, um, PowerPoints, graphics, again, you'll find that uh, all over here. In our customer digital experiences, we're going to find demos, uh, immersion experiences, uh, walkthroughs, click-throughs. Here's our value calculator. And what we're going to launch down here is the business workshop tool. So when we go into that, you'll see that, as mentioned, we have uh, a number of options. Now we can choose from uh, a tool that will look at businesses, education, and nonprofit. So you choose the one, obviously, that you're going to speak to. There are some nuances, obviously, around uh, education, nonprofit that may differ, but basically we would simply hit the get started. I will call your attention to the videos on the right hand side. There's a very handy about 15 minutes each that will uh, take you through that process, understand uh, and show you how to go through this, but I'll kick it off and get started. So what we can do here is we can go in and select a customer. All right, so we can choose a specific customer, but my advice to you is go in and select the option here. The assessment is not for a customer. Now I'm going to use this example as a way to uh, work and improve my knowledge around the product and potentially create a generic offering. It's also a very good thing, again, if you're just looking to do a generic quote, we'll need to go in here and select our country geography of choice. And in this case, I'm going to select professional services. Now on the right hand side, you'll see that I've got the option to select uh, a solution. So this is going to help me choose the right Microsoft SKU and I can also go in here and start a workshop so you'll see how the workshop again is going to lead to typically to setting up a demo environment. So let me check this one at the top here and move to next. So now you'll see that we can design a solution on productivity which is included by default. We can add security, we can add collaboration, we could add communications, we can add the surface devices if we want and we could also add deployment. So I'm just gonna keep it simple and have productivity, security, and collaboration for the time being. And now let me give, begin the assessment. So again, in essence, this boils down to simple Q&A to ask customers. Again, imagine this conversation on the phone. You can say, okay, um, you know, how many users are we gonna have? So let's go up and not quite have 50, let's have probably about 16. 
Um, how can we help your organization achieve more? What do you want to do? So basically, I want to find the right solution. And I have got the option down here for more information if you want to. So don't overlook that capability. Um, is it going to be managed through a Microsoft partner? How soon are we going to implement that? So let's say it's a little ways out within three months. So we just basically bounce through all these questions. It's like, what version are we running? So uh, let's assume most people are running the consumer Windows 10 Home. Uh, if it's people, what version of Office already exists? So we typically see consumer uh, licensed versions of Office. What have we got? So we're going to have PCs, Apple computers, Android, and uh, Apple phones. And again, any third party apps we need to monitor, what sort of capabilities are important to your team, uh, and so on. So we basically you know, bounce through all of these questions to see that it's nice uh, and easy to do that. And then it will come out with a, a selection at the end. I can move between any of these options up the top, right, by just selecting on them. So let me just quickly go through this and uh, answer some obvious things here rather than talking to each individual uh, point so we can get to the uh, evaluation so you can basically see uh, what that is involved. Now, this is quite comprehensive. If you um, haven't used it, it's going to answer a lot of the questions and basically help you understand, you know, what SKUs include uh, all these sort of products. Uh, so we're going to need this. We're going to need this. Uh, again, let's go with that. Uh, would you like to enable? Yes. Uh, let's say not sure there, not sure there. Uh, use existing equipment. Next, hopefully one more screen. Uh, okay. Oh, it wants me to answer a question which I haven't answered. Uh, where is it? Uh, I thought I answered all the questions anyway. Um, okay, so I've obviously missed that. Please answer. Please answer. Okay. Um, all right, so I've missed a question which I can't see for some reason. So let me go back here quickly. Uh, no. All right, so I can't see it. But at the end of the day, the idea is, is you follow through uh, all these uh, options here and uh, basically you will then uh, have information spat out for you. Again, I think it's still complaining. So what have I missed here? Maybe productivity. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Be nice of them to uh, show me that. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, so let's go back here and go next. 100%. There we go. That's what we want to see. So apologies for that. So the idea here is that you'll see now it gives you the recommended SKU here. So we're going to be recommending Microsoft 365 Business Premium. We're going to uh, have the value of it. You'll be able to click on all these links. We can have a look for adding any additional capabilities. So if you want more capabilities, we could add Microsoft 365 E3. These are going to be the upgrades. Again, you'll see that you get a Q&A here as well. Uh, you get down the bottom here this ROI analysis. So we can go in and look at the detailed ROI. And if we go right down the bottom here, you'll see that we've got a deployment planner. We've also got an offer builder and we can also download a full uh, PowerPoint that we can use for a customer presentation. So all the information that we've got out of here, we can download to a PowerPoint and send that out or PDF and send it along to customers. My advice to you is to use this tool generically, click everything and then take the PowerPoint and then customize it to suit your needs. And you'll see that you can also email the results there. Now, we've also got in there an ROI calculator. I'm not gonna go through that because we need to put a lot of uh, individual detail in there. If you want, you can also spit out that value calculator to an Excel spreadsheet, and that's pretty good because then you could start adding your own value add services uh, on top of that. All right, so at the end of the day, the second takeaway that I would have for you is going to be around uh, this tool. Okay, so transform.microsoft.com. And when you go there, you'll see that there are a range of options. Microsoft spent a lot of money on there to provide these resources, make them available, make your life easy. And again, if you work through uh, that business workshop tool, it'll take you through step by step and answer some questions or give you a good uh, way to go and speak to customers and prospects and again, work out and filter their needs. Now, as we get towards the end of our time, I will call out uh, a few other important things here. The first is the service description. So there are service descriptions for Microsoft 
365 business and business premium. And there is also service descriptions for the uh, Microsoft uh, environment in total, Microsoft 365 environment. So if you go to your um, favorite search engine of choice, so if I go to Microsoft 365 business premium service description, it should again uh, basically pop right up. So if we have a look at this service description, it will show you the comparison of what's included in business premium versus business standard. All right, so if we go through here, you'll see that uh, business premium is going to give us DLP, data loss prevention. You'll see that it will also give us uh, Microsoft Defender for Office 365. So that's going to give us our mail hygiene, our safe attachments, safe links and so on. It's going to give us things like Azure multi-factor authentication. Now Azure multi-factor authentication is going to give us additional capabilities around passwordless login. We're going to get dynamic groups. We're going to get cloud app discovery and so on. All right, so there's lots and lots of options and this is a very good reference because remember that Microsoft, again, will update this regularly. You'll find there's also one around business voice, for example, if you're interested in, uh, again, looking at the integration of the telephony system uh, into your environment. And if you go up here, you will see that you get the overarching uh, Microsoft and Office 365 uh, service descriptions here. Really great reference to work out exactly what is included in each plan in granular detail. And I will also point you to the education licensing is in here as well. So take advantage of this information from Microsoft to update your knowledge and understanding of what is included in each of those plans. In that PowerPoint we used with the transform.microsoft.com, you'll find a nice slide that covers off all the licensing capabilities provided in that slide deck. So again, another really handy thing to have in there. So these two URLs, uh, the service descriptions, I would suggest are must-haves. Make sure that you have them uh, on your list. Now, the last one that I'll call out here is the Microsoft 365 Roadmap. Now, the big benefit of this is going to be, as we all uh, appreciate, is the Microsoft 365 environment is a ever-changing uh, environment. Okay, so we're basically looking uh, at trying to keep up with all these changes. So you'll see here the roadmap is going to give us an understanding of what's in development, what's rolling out, and what products have launched. Now in here, we can go in and we can, for example, filter down uh, and do a particular search, in this case for iOS. We get to see uh, the feature, we get to see when it was released or when it's going to be released. Over here, we can go in and obviously filter by our products, a release phase, platform, all that sort of stuff. What I would point you to is the fact that over here, we do get an RSS feed of this environment. So what we can do is you can use this in a normal RSS feeder, but my recommendation to you would be is to look at using the RSS reader capability inside Teams to suck in uh, this RSS feed to provide any updates to the platform into your own uh, Teams environment so you're aware of what's going on. That means that you're going to be prepared for when these new capabilities roll out. You'll also be able to use that as a marketing opportunity to go and speak to your customers. Say, look, this is coming, this new feature, be aware of that. Um, do you want us to implement? Do you want us to help you do uh, training uh, and all that uh, respects? So lots and lots of resources out there. Again, uh, service descriptions and also the Microsoft 365 uh, roadmap which I would recommend that you make sure that you keep across. Secure score, as I've called out, is the absolute starting point, I think, for evaluating your own security. Make sure that you have your level as high as can be, then move on to your customers, then move on to your prospects. And remember that even when you get to secure your secure score to even a rating of 100, uh, I would suggest that is only the beginning of your approach to security because there's always going to be more that can be done there's already going to be many more capabilities and features that microsoft make available to you that you can begin to incorporate so again start with the basics here get secure score done then again look at uh, keeping on top of those changes the service descriptions from there you can also look at something called the productivity score 
So Microsoft also makes available a metric around how people are using the things like Teams and calling and emails, uh, OneDrive for business. So the encouragement from Microsoft is to consider a Teams or collaboration practice and to consider a security practice um, in the development of your business. And remember that many of the tools that you would need probably um, are already based in the Microsoft environment or again can be added on or easily incorporated with a, a simple license upgrade. So I would suggest to you that business premium should be the go to SKU in the SMB because it includes security and the collaboration and the desktop apps. And for example, one of the biggest things that you receive uh, with things like business premium that benefits a user is effectively an unlimited uh, mailbox. So because business premium includes Exchange Online archiving, that means that the cloud archive component of the mailbox extends to an unlimited capacity. Uh, and that's something that's really enticing to a lot of users. There's a lot of those sort of benefits that are in uh, business premium over other ones, but don't forget, start with what you've got. Look what we've got here in Secure Score. You'll see that again, depending on the SKU, you get some pretty nice uh, hunting features to allow you to do queries. We've got some threat analytics in here. This integrates with things like Defender for uh, Office 365, going to make the environment more secure. You'll see here that we've got threat trackers, all sorts of things in here. So I'd really encourage you to make sure that you go in and have a look at what is capable with Microsoft 365 uh, environment. And then, as I said, start with something like uh, Secure Score. So I think with that, that's sort of all that I, uh, again, had to uh, cover off here. I will uh, call on our wonderful moderators to see if there are any questions that um, I would particularly need to address. Oh, thank you very much, Robert. Um, yeah, we have a, a question for you first up, and I've got a few here. Um, what is cloud uh, app discovery? So what we get in a environment today, which Elliot has highlighted, is we get shadow IT. So what you get is that you get people who are using non-authorized corporate, uh, non-authorized consumer apps. Now, cloud app security, a cloud app discovery is going to provide us with the capability to monitor the traffic um, that is occurring uh, in that environment. Now, cloud app discovery is basically, sorry, cloud app, yeah, cloud app discovery is basically a component of the full Microsoft cloud app security. So let me just show you quickly what that sort of looks like. Uh, and the idea is, is you can feed in logs uh, from uh, things like your um, firewalls, from third party engines and so on to give you the capability to monitor the traffic, see what's, uh, okay, so that one's not gonna work for some reason. So take it from me that basically it is the capability to uh, monitor traffic in your organization as it flows to uh, the cloud environment. So give me another question while I'm pulling up that portal probably. Well, the uh, next question is a little bit more complex. It's around um, uh, whether Secure Score uh, helps with the Essential 8. So the answer is yes. Uh, definitely, it absolutely helps. If you look at the uh, Essential 8, basically what it is, is that it is a high level set of guidelines as to how to implement security. Now, Part of that is device management. So for example, in a world where we have um, uh, device manager dot Microsoft dot com. No, what is it? Uh, sorry, not device manager. It's endpoint. Endpoint.microsoft.com. So endpoint.microsoft.com, as you see here, is readily available in every SKU, but to implement things like the Intune policy, to do the device management around Windows, iOS, and Android, you're going to need something like Microsoft 365 Business Premium to set these policies to allow you to do uh, things like the baselines here. So the baselines from Microsoft, again, are going to conform to that uh, essential eight. So if we go in here quickly and just have a look at some of the properties, you'll see here that 
uh, again, all of these settings largely are derived from best practices, which are included uh, in things like essential out. So my advice to you is there is an element you can do with the generic SKUs, but there is so much more that you can do to comply with the essential eight, especially around device management, uh, thanks to things like Microsoft 365 Business Premium. And a quick step back to Cloud App Discovery. So here's an example report. This will give you, again, the traffic, the apps that are being used, uh, and who's actually using those apps and who's sending the information. The other thing that I really like about it when it comes to security is its ability here to give you information about OAuth applications. So OAuth applications are ones that have been typically approved by a user that have full access to uh, that login. And this is sort of a modern way that fishers are trying to get into environments. And here we can quickly and easily see which ones are in use and we can ban them uh, if we so choose. So again, that's another benefit of cloud app discovery. Anything else, George? Uh, very good. Now we've got um, a question for Elliot. Um, again, on the same theme of Essential 8, how does, um, how does that point help enforce Essential 8 policies? Yeah, thanks, George. Um, so, Central is a, a tricky, a tricky one, as uh, Robert mentioned. It's it's virtually a guideline that government put in place to, um, as a recommendation that all businesses should comply with, um, and, and comply uh, use, use loosely because it's not something that they enforce. Um, it's just something that you you know you can put into place to to provide a. I guess a basic level or central level of security um, uh, from a corporate point of view. Um, so on there, we have products that sort of um, sit in line with some of that, uh, like your, you know, your backup um, solutions. Um, but where a lot of that comes down into is, you know, many MSBs are using a uh, RMM tool today to do your patching or some um, some other things. That's where potentially you could use things like Intune um, and. and where we can potentially help is some of that governance, right, just to control uh, what what those users are doing, right? But in 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 terms of what you need to do, as I've mentioned um, uh, at one of my points, you can put a lot of things in place, right? But unless you've got those key um, um, essential eight. Uh, backends in place like restricting the admin um, privileges so they can't go through and deploy third party software, right? Example to to basically navigate around any processes and policies you put in place um, because they could just revert back to those and, and all the security that you've put in place, if you miss that one, um, be, you know, can basically become null and void because so they're just screwing the system. Sorry to interrupt quickly, but I've got hopefully I've got the essential eight on the screen here for people to look at. And for example, you see, you see one of the things here is multi-factor authentication, right? So you can implement Microsoft uh, multi-factor authentication, a third party or whatever. So the essential eight is just going to be the guideline as Elliot says. And again, you'll see here that, for example, I would suggest to you that application control, uh, macro settings, all that sort of stuff is going to be achieved much easier with you know, Microsoft 365 Business Premium or Microsoft 365 E5. But as Elliot mentioned, it's going to be a guideline and you would then need to set up the policies, monitoring enforcement, and that's the value add that resellers bring to the, the engagement. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. You know that that guideline is going to help, but it's not the it's not the last piece of the puzzle, right? There's going to uh, be some additional tools you might be put in place. You know, if you're using Defender as your endpoint protection, that's obviously additional things that that you have on top of what the essential eight recommend. Um, but you could use some other third party tools as well that to, to fit in those blanks. So um, it really comes down to you um, uh, and your clients basically assessing what is acceptable risk at the end of the day, uh, and then putting those measures in place. All right, that's great. Um, our final question is for you again, Elliot, and it was a question around um, AvPoint's um, uh, policy uh, features. Are they necessarily a replacement for what Microsoft does, or do they augment what Microsoft already does? I would lead to the latter. Uh, we augment. We're basically, again, uh, we're not doing anything magical out of the box, right? Where all those controls, all those things that we bring in through policies and insights is available in the Microsoft uh, environments today, right? Natively. Um, we're just bringing that into. Um, I guess a single dashboard to allow you to control all those bits and pieces from there. 
we're not doing everything. Um, as as Robert showed you, there's a lot of things you can do through SecureScore. Um, as I showed through, through my presentation, there's a lot of different uh, administration areas that you can go to to add those restrictions and, and provision your users, right? Um, it's going to add the basic elements to sort of, um, you know, start to harden or, or control how your users are collaborating. Um, but there's going to be some features that don't exist in policies and insights today that you'll still potentially need to leverage the uh, native functions of uh, Microsoft to um, uh, to add a little bit more uh, hardening and control as part of that. Fantastic. Well, uh, I think that exhausts all our questions and then brings us to the end of our, our uh, webinar. We'd like to thank you all for attending. I'd like to thank uh, Elliot from Avpoint and Robert from CIA Ops for uh, contributing to our webinar today. Um, our recording of this webinar will be available and the slides will be available soon. Uh, we thank you all for attending and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Appreciate it, George. Thank you, guys.